Oh, the the brief, the brief. Um, uh, I can go through each of the areas of San Diego. This is, and okay. uh, talk about, and then um, while I'm talking, you think about the things that I've forgotten to mention, because there's so many things in San Diego to do. And again, depending on whether you have children or not, whether you're interested, you know what you're interested in. So, uh, and since I retired a couple of years ago, I've been started. I've been hiking all over San Diego. I never thought of myself as a hiker, um, but we've got so many parks and uh, reserves and botanical gardens and things. And um, I started, you know, the Natural History Museum in, in Balboa Park, they have a group of volunteers called the Canyoneers. And what they do is they have to, um, they're docents essentially, and they have to learn uh, all the plants and animals, the local uh, and native plants and animals. And then they offer free hikes um, around San Diego County for the public. You, and uh, you don't even have to sign up, you just show up. And they're usually on Saturdays, Sundays, and sometimes a Tuesday or a Wednesday. And they, uh, it's on their website. So if you go to the San Diego Natural History Museum or the nat.org, uh, and look up Canyoneers, then there's a, um, uh, they have a list of them. And now because of the pandemic, they have not been doing them, but what they have been doing is publishing like 20, uh, 10 best hikes for spring, 10 best hikes for winter, you know? So obviously in the summertime, you don't wanna go out to the desert, but in the winter you can do that. So anyway, so I started, um, when I retired, I started hiking with the Canyoneers just for fun. And it was fun to go to different places in San Diego where I had not been and learn more about the plants and the animals. Well, now in the last year, I've been just been going with friends um, and using their book. It's called um, Coast to Cactus. They, there's a whole book based on hiking in San Diego and it tells you uh, if it's difficult, easy, moderate, um, how long it should take, how to get there, what plants and animals to look for while you're there. And that's been really fun. I've just been, there's a, another book called 50 Short Hikes in San Diego. And um, so my friends and I have been working through them. Uh, it's like, okay, where shall we go today? You know, and, uh, and not repeating too many of them. And, and that's been fun. But um, the, uh, nor, I'll, the San Diego started back in uh, 1542 when Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo arrived. And um, it was a protected harbor. They were looking for gold. Um, there was an amazing view, but they didn't find any gold. Uh, the Spanish were disappointed, but Portugal, because uh, Cabrillo was from Portugal, uh, created a statue in his honor. And so if you visit the Cabrillo National Monument, which just happens to be the second most visited national monument in the U.S. next to the Statue of Liberty. Okay. Yeah, who knew? Did not know um, that. Uh, the, the statue is there. There's also, um, you can watch the, there's whale watching there from December through February when they come through uh, from the north going down to Baja. Originally when Cabrillo arrived, there were whales in the harbor uh, because it was protected. But after they were, uh, like sh shooting fish in a barrel, the whales figured it out and they left. They went down to Baja to make it a little bit harder for the uh, the whalers. Uh, and then, uh, so besides whale watching, you can, there's a couple of hikes that you can take down the, the uh, uh, in Point Loma at the Cabrillo National Monument. There's also the original lighthouse. I, I don't know if you've ever been out there. Yes. Um, they, and I love the story about that is they built it up high, you know, which would make sense because you could see the light, but the light wasn't close enough to the end of the land, which made it dangerous for the ships. So the, the lighthouse keeper had to go down to the point with a shotgun. And when the, the, the uh, ships got too close, he'd have to shoot the shotgun so they wouldn't run into the land. Um, so I love that story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's also good for the kids. Uh, there's tide pools down there uh, at the Cabrillo National Monument. Um, 
And the other thing that I'm sure you're aware of, the former uh, Naval Training Center is right there in the Point Loma area, which they've turned into Liberty Station as an homage to the, you know, the military. But they've done a great job with uh, all kinds of shops and restaurants and art uh, galleries and uh, things for kids to do. There's ceramic classes and uh, it's amazing what you can find online to do that you wouldn't normally think of. When people think of San Diego as a tourist, of course, they think of the, the uh, zoo, SeaWorld, the Safari Park, Legoland, but those can get expensive for families, even with right. the military discounts, which I always suggest people follow up. But there's so many things now, and I hope people through the pandemic have discovered, you know, outdoors that you can do that doesn't cost you anything. What's she saying? Cross referencing the painting class. Oh, until 3.30. Oh, well. <laughs> All right. Thanks for following up on that. <laughs> well, we're here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> we're here. Um, so, yeah. So I like to do the hike over there. The The lighthouse is always fun to take people to. Um, and plus, if it's a clear day, the view from up there is just phenomenal. It is unbelievable across the... I mean obviously out to the ocean, but across to the city, it is it is just unbelievable out to the mountains. And yeah, it really is fantastic. Uh, then there's the mission. Um, the, the, the fun part about the mission, first of all, people don't realize there's actually four missions in San Diego County. Uh, some of them are little and they're out uh, inland, but there's still active missions. The main one being now, of course, in Mission Valley, but it was originally established at the top of the Presidio in Old Town. And uh, now the Sarah Museum is there documenting that time because Father Sarah came up from Mexico to settle California because they didn't, the Spaniards who owned it at the time didn't want the Russians who were coming down from the other direction to take over California. So Father Sarah took a mule and, and several people and they walked uh, up the coast of California and established 21 missions. And each of those missions is a donkey's walk day apart. <laughs> so wherever they landed, that's where they would dedicate the next mission. And a friend of mine, who's also a hiker and a walker, I guess there's a whole group of people called the Mission Walkers. And they go, their, their goal is to go walk from mission to mission. Not all at once, you know, Right. anymore unless you're you know insane but um <laughs> but uh but they do they they walk the path from mission to mission and it's this whole camaraderie thing that and um I, even with all the freeways built the way they are they figure out a way um to do that but at the actual mission um in the valley it's still a church a church still operating it's open or was before the pandemic that's the thing. Everything I say has to be double checked now. <laughs> see if they're open again. Um, and and so, um, Father, the 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 peep, the friars at the mission up on the Presidio. The Presidio, of course, is where the fort was. So the soldiers are around, and they were harassing the the Indians that they were trying to convert. So they moved the mission down from the Presidio in Old Town down to Mission Valley. Uh, and that was like 200 years after uh, Cabrillo was here. So then at the bottom of the Presidio is the Old Town State Park. And they have a, um, a super old original cemetery there, um, which is one of the oldest or the oldest European, uh, you have to say that now because there are Native American cemeteries, European cemetery. Um, and that's really fun to, to visit around Halloween because they do a lot of the Day of the Dead stuff and they do, um, I don't know if you're familiar with ghosts, uh, with Old Town Trolley Tours. Right. They do a ghost and gravestone tour, which is a lot of fun. Um, so they have houses from the original families that settled the Old Town area. The Sarah Museum is up in the Presidio. Um, the State Park has a free walking tour every day at, uh, on Saturdays, I think at uh, two o'clock. Some of the things that the kids love to do are the um, Sealy stables because they have all the old blacksmith stuff and the kids can see how horses were shooed back then and, and uh, the tools. The first schoolhouse for San Diego is there. There's a newspaper museum 
And the story about the old town jail, one of the guys that was incarcerated dug himself out with a knife. Um, so uh, hopefully the next jail they built was a little bit more secure. There's also um, a sheriff's museum in Old Town and uh, one of the volunteers that used to work with me at the visitor center was a retired sheriff and uh, she volunteers down there now and just loves it and uh, all kinds of memorabilia there. Plus the Mormon Battalion. Have you ever been over to that? Yes. That story is fascinating and I thought they did a great job putting that together. Um, and, and then uh, my mom is a huge fan of Cinco de Mayo. So we were just down there with the mariachis and the guacamole and the churros and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and then those Victorian homes up on the hill the in Old Town called Heritage Park, right. th those used to be around San Diego and they were scheduled to be demolished for whatever reason. And the Parks and Recreation Department got together and arranged to move them to the park to save them for posterity. And, um, and my uh, stepdad actually worked for Parks and Rec then and that was one of his projects to help preserve Heritage Park and all those cute little Victorian homes. Um, so now we're in the 1850s and uh, the California gold rush was in earnest up in San Francisco. And uh, this guy named William Heath Davis decided that they needed to move downtown, which uh, the city center, which was in Old Town, move it down to downtown. And he brought a bunch of um, prefabricated homes around the Cape which was a long way um, because they didn't have the Panama Canal at the time. And uh, there still is one of those prefabricated homes at Fourth and Island, the William De Heath Davis house, and you can go visit that. They have docents that do tours of the gas lamp area. Um, they called it Davis's folly for the longest time because he really lost all his money in that. Uh, but about 17 years later, Alonzo Horton came along and he was a real estate magnate. He convinced people in San Francisco to buy lots in San Diego. And he sold them all corner lots because uh, he could get more money for them. And so he made really small blocks so that he had more corner lots to sell. <laughs> and uh, um, he made a killing because he bought 960 acres for 27 and a half, half cents an acre downtown. Then there was a suspicious fire in Old Town, and so they ended up moving the city center down to <laughs> downtown. Um, and the, the gas lamp quarter is um, full of bars and restaurants and antique uh, shops and the Victorian storefronts, as well as new buildings. The, the new Children's Museum, which is a great place to visit if you've got grandkids, um, nieces and nephews. Uh, they do some wonderful programs, have great art down there, but it's they built a whole new building for them. And of course, Petco Park, our baseball park, is, is in downtown now. Uh, and getting ready to, I guess it's reopened. They're starting to have games there. Yeah, yeah that's what I heard. I think they actually are going to have some concerts there, too, this summer. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of my nieces is dating a guy who's actually in charge of putting together some of that schedule. Um, anyway, Horton Plaza used to be a lovely shopping center uh, built a little over 30 years ago and uh, in 85, and now it's all being redone. So it's all blocked off right now. But then you've got the waterfront area with the Santa Fe Depot, which is a historic building. Um, the Maritime Museum with the Star of India, the Berkeley, the Medea, the San Salvador, which is a rep replica of Cabrillo's ship. In the olden days, they um, did movies on board the Star of India and they put the movie on the, the ship's sail, which was way fun. Um, yeah. You had to bundle up because you know that ocean breeze comes up. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the Star of India, if you're a donor, you know, every couple of years they take that out and the volunteers sail it and you can actually um, be asked to sail on board the Star of India, which is pretty cool. Um, right. And then I, uh, I actually used to visit San Diego when there was a ferry, uh, people and car ferry that went over to Coronado. Then they built the Coronado Bridge, so they stopped the ferry so people would take the bridge and help pay for it. 
then it paid for itself early. And so they reinstituted the ferry, but it's just a people ferry. Um, yeah. One of the, um, there's, a, there's also downtown, there's a firehouse museum, which uh, is good for the kids because they can see antique fire engines and equipment from the 1800s. And they do have La Jolla's first fire engine that was from the 1800s that you can see there. Um, also, some people don't realize, you, you've been here a while, you probably do that. Remember that movie, Master and Commander? Mm -hmm. with Russell Crowe. That was filmed right. on board the, the HMS Surprise, which is one of the ships that's at the uh, Maritime Museum, which okay. is pretty cool. Yeah. And a couple right. of their docents were part of the extras in that, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, and then there's, of course, the, the, one of the things my girlfriends and I love to do, because we work down on the waterfront with the visitor center, is take the um, cocktail tours on board the harbor tour on Friday nights during the summer, they would do uh, okay. hors, hors d'oeuvres and cocktails. So that's always fun to take guests down there and watch the sunset. Um, oh yeah. The uh, And the Midway, if you've been in the Navy, I'm sure you've seen your fill of, of <laughs> aircraft carriers, but my dad was on the original uh, shakedown cruise for the oh. USS Midway back in 1946. And uh, they, yeah, they went up to Iceland and, uh, you know, anyways, that was some fun history um, for me. And it was fun going on board with him, you know, years later to see what he remembered. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you can go across to Coronado, which I love. And it's also a fun place to walk. You can just walk around Coronado or bike because it's fairly flat. Um, right. the, ho the Hotel Dell has all the rumors surrounding it, like, you know, that's where Wallace Simpson met, you know, Prince uh, Edward, uh, the Prince of Wales, and um, whether they did or not is conjecture, <laughs> but whatever, it makes a good story. Thomas Edison supervised the lighting of the first lights at the Hotel Dell, and um, uh, of course, Some Like It Hot, that movie with Tony Curtis, Jack Lemon, right. and Marilyn Monroe was filmed there, um, which scared the daylights out of me when I was a kid. All those people were popping out of cakes with machine guns. It's like, <laughs> um, and I, I know, it's like mom said I wouldn't go to a birthday party for years. Anyway, um, the, um, the ballroom, you know, where they have the big Sunday brunch at the Hotel Del. Uh, mm -hmm. ballroom. It's the largest column-free ballroom, tongue and groove, uh, no nails. The whole, oh. that whole ballroom was built with no nails, which just amazes. Um, Goodness. And L, L. Frank Baum, the guy that wrote The Wizard of Oz, he mm -hmm. lived there for a while, not at the hotel, but in Coronado. And that's the other rumor is that the Orange Avenue, he, he envisioned the yellow brick road and the Hotel Dell was the Emerald City. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so that's kind I've of I've never heard that. Yeah, he also actually designed the crown chandeliers in the crown room, L. Frank Baum did. So next time you're over in the crown room, check out those uh, uh, chandeliers. Um, and we have gondolas. If you're looking for a romantic escape or a Mother's Day fun event, um, there's gondolas in Coronado and there's gondolas up in Lake San Marcos. Um, and you can just Google, you know, gondolas in San Diego and it'll, it'll tell you where they are. And they have the whole outfits, you know, like the guys in Italy and um, that you can bring, they have chocolate covered strawberries and champagne, all that kind of thing. So something different to do. How are we doing on time? I'm supposed to be done and, oh, we got time. Okay. Um, Balboa Park really got its start uh, back in 1915. Um, oh, it means we're, they're not going to cut us off. That's nice. Oh. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> 1915, we had the California Panama Exposition. San Diego actually lost the bid for the World's Fair. They decided they were going to have an exposition anyway. And um, the the Panama one was to celebrate the completion of the Panama Canal. And that's when 
afterwards, there was animals left over from the exposition. Dr. Harry Wegaforth heard the lions roaring. And uh, as the story goes, he decided we needed a zoo. So he took those animals from, left over from the exposition and was the father, grandfather of our current zoo. Um, yeah. And it's the only place outside of Australia still that you can see koalas. Um, we have the um, largest uh, colony outside of Australia. And now we have up at the Safari Park, if you've been up in Escondido, um, we have a platypus, which oh. is only, <laughs> only in Australia. And so they built a special enclosure for this, these platypus, platypi, whatever. That was my, um, my first animal word when I was a kid was duck-billed platypus, mother says, because um, I had a stuffed one, you know, a little toy, duck-billed platypus. So anyway, we had to go see them. They're lovely. Um, but, but Balbo Park also, um, one of the things I love about it is they have a museum for just about anybody. They've got the Mingay Museum, which is folk art from around the world. Um, and they've been very creative. They're closed right now because they're renovating, building a whole new building but they've been doing online events for children, family days. Uh, you can register and they send out packets of information so that you can participate in these art projects. Um, and like I said, the, the uh, Natural History Museum is there. There's also the Space Theater and Science Center, which has all kinds of hands-off stuff for kids. Um, and there's a ton of walking trails through Balboa Park. So uh, you can, there's, go online and look up Seven Bridges Walk. And you can either go at sandiego.org is the tourism authorities website, sandiego.org, and look up Seven Bridges Walk. Or um, there's an app called All Trails and they have all kinds of information about walking San Diego. Um, but the Seven Bridges Walk, it goes through Balboa Park. So it goes over the Cabrillo Bridge and, um, and then there's a suspension bridge, the Spruce Street suspension bridge. Mm -hmm. There's the First Avenue bridge. There's, anyway, it's cool because it takes you through Bank of, Bankers Hill. It gives you a little history along the way. And, uh, and uh, you can see all the different kind of architectures on these bridges. Oh, wow. So I did that recently. That was fun. Um, Of course, the Old Globe Theater is in Balboa Park. We're hoping theater will come back soon. Um, they've been doing a lot of lovely lectures on Shakespeare um, online. Barry Edelstein is a premier Shakespeare expert. He's the um, director over there. He's, I could listen to him speak for hours. He's just fascinating. And, you know, anyway, it's fun to do, especially if you like Shakespeare. He explains it. He makes it accessible to people who never thought they would like Shakespeare. Um, he talks about why they say what they say and what it means and all this kind of stuff. Um, also, I don't know if you've ever been to uh, Balboa Park during the Ethnic Food Festival. They, again, with the pandemic, I don't know when they'll do it again, but keep an eye on it they have all those little houses over there that are represented right. by all the different countries. And twice a year, they put together a food festival and all these people from all the different countries that live here now bring their uh, foods. And it's, you know, phenomenal as far as tasting stuff from all over the world. And also they have what they call lawn programs at two o'clock on Sundays oh, or from one to four. Um, each house takes a turn and so they all show up in their native uh, ethnic dress. They have samples of their food. They do a little festival. So it's a great Sunday afternoon. Um, besides the organ concerts in the organ pavilion, which was donated by John D. Spreckles of Spreckles Sugar fame. He used to live over on Coronado. In fact, the Glorietta Bay Inn, which is across from the Hotel Dell, that was right. his personal mansion. And so oh, when- I didn't know that. Yeah, and he, the organ used to be there. And so when I, evidently he didn't ran out of room for it or sold the hotel or whatever, so they uh, he donated it to the people of San Diego. And so it's in Balboa Park. It's the largest outdoor organ pavilion complex. 
Um, there's so much more. There's Mission Bay, which in 1919, there was a, organ, a tourism organization called the San Diego California Club. And they wrote ads to get people from the East to come out here for the palm trees and the Spanish heritage and all of our beaches. Um, people needed a vacation after the war. So that was a really good time to market to people to get them out here. Um, they dredged Mission Bay actually because it was just mud flats and they made it uh, available for sailing and water skiing and windsurfing and sunning and bike riding and jogging and parasailing. And uh, the Bahia Bell and the William D. Evans, you know, the Bahia Bell is that little uh, right. cute little boat that goes around and you can used to be able to go on and um, it's like a floating bar. And then the William D. Evans, you can uh, rent for your wedding or reception or party or um, whatever you want to do. And those are both, both owned by the Bahia, the Bahia Hotel. Um, SeaWorld is down there in the bay. And then something some people don't aren't aware of, there's actually what they call a 59 mile scenic drive. And um, you can go online, just look up 59 mile scenic drives and it gives you the map and the directions. And you can do it all at once in about three hours or you can take just pieces of it and, um, and go see super scenic areas in San Diego. And that's fun, especially if you've got company from out of town, you have a short amount of time, you just wanna give them the whole overview of uh, San Diego. And there's a description to go along with it, tell you what you're seeing. Um, and then uh, there's La Jolla. So one of my, uh, we used to get really funny questions at the visitor center. I'm sure if you've ever worked in customer service, you know how interesting the public can be to work with. And so there's an underwater park in La Jolla, which is a preserved area for all of the sea life, you know? So the scuba divers and the snorkelers just love it. Well, somebody wanted to know how to get tickets for the underwater park. It's like, well, <laughs> You don't. That was kind of like they wanted to go um, get tickets to go see the Mile of Cars in National City. How do we go see the Mile of Cars? <laughs> it, or what day is Sunday brunch? Um, <laughs> Those are good. I'm lost. Can you help me? Where are you? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, and I remember when we had the El Nino, remember the super duper uh, Somebody called from Paris and wondered if we were evacuating because of the El Nino. <laughs> like, no, but thanks for calling. Um, so we've got the beautiful beaches in La Jolla. We've got all that uh, snorkeling and scuba diving and skin diving. Uh, the Scripps Institute is there and you can watch them feed the fish. Their relatively new building has an amazing view and plus great place to do parties out on their deck. Um, prospects. Street has been called the Rodeo Drive of the South because of all the fancy boutiques. Um, and the, that pink hotel, the La Valencia, they called it the Hotel of the S Stars because people from Hollywood used to come right. down and hang out there. We did, we did a staycation there once. It was wonderful. Oh, awesome. Yes, <laughs> I love that place. <laughs> also, Torrey Pine State Reserve, which is another wonderful place to walk. And um, it's our only native tree besides, you know, all of the, the desert chaparral. San Diego is actually a high desert or low desert, I don't know, Mediterranean, whatever. And so we have a lot of desert kind of plants. And um, it was Ellen Browning Scripps who brought in the trees from all over the place and populated Balboa Park and several other areas with trees. Um, all right, I think I've got like, Two minutes left. Do you have questions? <laughs> no, I'm just enjoying this. I'm, I'm okay. enjoying this conversation. <laughs> All right. Um, so if you had children or grandchildren or know people that do, you can talk to them about um, all of the hands-on stuff that the museums have, the uh, nature centers, the art studios and classes um, over in Liberty Station or in Balboa Park. The like I mentioned, you can go online for the Natural History Museum and look and see what hikes they've got. 
Um, I didn't even cover like Northeast and South County, but we've got uh, casinos out um, in East County and North County. There's a fabulous museum of making music up in Carlsbad, which is, hand, it's relatively new. And well, I don't know, people don't know about it because it's kind of tucked away, but it's called the Museum of Making Music. And it's fabulous. We took our little grandson there and they can play pianos. They have got displays um, from the music industry. So it's, it's, um, it's different, it's small, which makes it really doable for people with short attention spans. Um, and um, yeah, I definitely recommend that. Um, there's uh, Jeep tours you can do out in East County. There's an area of the Anza Borrego Desert State Park that actually looks like a mini Grand Canyon. Um, you do need a four wheel drive to get to part of it, which is why the Jeep tours are nice. Um, and then we were just up there in Warner Springs, the part of the Pacific Crest Trail, you know, these people that hike from Mexico all the way up to Canada on the Pacific, right. since they wrote that book and did that movie, Into the Wild. Um, we were on part of the Pacific Crest Trail going to a place called Eagle Rock, which is, if you've seen a picture of it, looks exactly like an eagle. And it's just the rocks, the way they fell there, which is pretty awesome. Um, but it was fun meeting all these people that are hiking this trail. It's like, I think they're insane, but I also admire them because it's like, oh, all of, that's a long hike. Um, yeah. Yeah. So also Julian is a lovely day trip. Go up and, uh, shop, get their apple pie, go antiquing. Um, yep. and the gold mine. The gold mine is there. There's wineries <laughs> along the way. Yeah, what's not and, to love? And there is a regional park close to Julian. I can't remember the name of it now. It's a it's a person's name, you know. Um, and it's a regional park. And we were up in Julian and a staycation, and we were driving around and found this regional park, and it was just fantastic. And up. You know, up in the, the top of it, you can just see forever. Oh, cool. It was just um, William something. I I can't remember the name, but it's a person's name. Heise. It was just phenomenal. Is it Will William Heisey? H-E-I-S-E? Yes. 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 And there's a campground. Yeah. Yes. Cool. But you can walk all the way to the top, and on a clear day, you just see for literally forever. It's unbelievable. And yeah. it's, we never knew it was there. We just stumbled upon it. And the Laguna, Laguna Sunrise Highway, um, that mm -hmm. you can go the back way up there. It's beautiful views from up there. Right. So anyway. Yeah. All right. Sorry, didn't mean to. <laughs> That's okay. I think my time is up. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever gotten hot air ballooning? No, I, but I've been para, parasailing. So, oh yeah, that's so, awesome. <laughs> yeah, done that. <laughs> but yeah. thank you very much. I mean, I, 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 you know, I feel like I wasted your time just talking to to me, and of course Anna was hearing you too. But uh, I really appreciate it. There's a, I mean, I've got a bunch of notes here, and when we're back in San Diego, I'm going to be doing some stuff. Good, and then you can share that information with other people, and Anna says she will exactly. too. So, exactly. whatever works. <laughs> That's right. Well, thank you so much. This You're welcome. Really terrific. Thanks I'm for inviting me. They're going to be very upset they missed this. <laughs> I know. Well, hopefully they had fun painting. <laughs> exactly. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye-bye. Later. Bye.